Hello, so today we're going through five very difficult math A standard level questions, specifically for section A. Let's start with this first one from May 2025. I know a lot of people found this exam terrifying. Let's debunk question six. So we're being told there's 10 rectangular picture frames, F1 to F10. On picture frame, F1 has width 4 centimeters, height 5 centimeters. And it says that this increases by 50% with every single picture frame. So we have to show that the area of picture frame F of n is 20 times 9 over 4 to the power of n minus 1. So this is clearly going to be a series, right? Uh, and by the sounds of it, it's geometric because it's increasing by 50%, meaning by 1.5. Um, that's what the width and the height is increasing, though. But we need to figure out how much is the area increasing to make a series with the area, if that makes sense. So for F1, we have that the area is going to be 20, right? 4 times 5. So 20 centimeters squared. I hope everyone follows that. What's it going to be for F2? So F2 is going to have a width of 4 times 1.5, so 50% more, which is 6, and then a height of 5 times 1.5, which is 7.5. So if anyone has any questions at any point, by the way, leave them in the comments. I'll try and reply within the day. Um, and this is going to be 45, I'm pretty sure. So 45 squared centimeters. So now we can calculate the ratio for the area. The area is increasing with a certain ratio, and that ratio is 45, right, F2, over F1, over 20. So now that we know this, we can use the formula for the geometric sequence to figure out what F of n is, right, to be able to calculate it for any picture frame. So F of n is going to be u1, again, u1, remember, is 20, times r, in this case, 45 over 20, to the power of n minus 1. We can then simplify 45 over 20 by dividing by 5, and it'll be 20 times 9 over 4 to the power of n minus 1 centimeters squared. There we go. That's the solution to A1. Now, the next one says, hence find the mean area of the 10 picture frames, giving your answer in that specific form. So if we want to calculate the mean, then we need to be calculate the sum of the 10 and then divide over 10, right? That's the definition of the mean. So thankfully for the geometric sequence, we also have a formula in the data booklet for the sum of n terms, right? So by the way, I'm just going to put the formula here. So the formula is um, u1 times trying to think about it, it's u1, yeah, times uh, r to the power of n minus 1 over r to the power of n minus 1. So, sorry, r minus 1, not r to the power of n minus 1. You can find that in the data booklet. So if we apply that here, s of 10 is going to be 20 times 45 over 20, or actually I guess we could write it as 9 over 4 to make our lives easier, because uh, remember we already made that simplification before, to the power of n minus 1, and then over 9 over 4 minus 1. So now what we can simplify here is the 9 over 4 minus 1. 1 is 4 over 4, meaning this will be 5 over 4. So it's 20. We keep what's inside the same for now. Okay, and then 5 over 4. And now what we can do is we can divide the 20 by 5 over 4. This basically implies multiplying times 4 and then dividing by 5. 4 times 20 is 80. 80 over 5 is 16. So it'll be 16 times 9 over 4 to the power of n minus 1. And voila, that's what they were asking for. Although, actually, sorry, I just remembered, this is the sum. So we need to divide this over 10 to get the actual mean. So the mean will be 16 over 10, 9 over 4, and minus 1. Okay. We also know that n in this case is 10, right? We could have made that substitution earlier, but it doesn't matter. n is 10. So we can do 16 over 10, brackets 9 over 4, to the power of 10, minus 1. Because we're doing 10 picture frames, right? So now we know that a is 10. And p is 16 over 10, which can also be written and simplified as 8 over 5. That's the answer. Not actually that complicated, is it? And then in part b, whoops, why is it not letting me go? There we go. It says, find the median area of the 10 picture frames. Now, remember, the median is the middle point. But in this case, we have 1 to 10, meaning there's actually no middle point. The middle point is 5.5. When we have that happen, what we do is we do the average between the fifth and the sixth, right? Since five point, we don't have a, a frame 5.5. It's the fifth frame and then the sixth frame, but we're going to average them up. So... First, to find the fifth, right, since we know we calculated before what un was, right, remember un, in this case, if we want to call it that, we can just call it fn, right, fn, remember, is 20 times 9 over 4 to the power of n minus 1, so we know that the fifth plus the sixth is going to be 20 over 9 over 4, 5 minus 1, plus 20, 9 over 4, 6 minus 1, and this is over 2 to calculate the mean of these two, obviously, right, so then if we simplify, we get 20, 9 over 4 to the power of 4 plus 20, 9 over 4 to the power of 5 over 2. We can then factor out 20 times 9 over 4 to the power of 4 from these two terms. So 20 times 9 over 4 to the power of 4 times 1 plus 9 over 4. I hope you see what I did there. 
I just factored that out. So if you were to multiply this again, you would get exactly what we had before, right? It's just another way of writing it. And now we can actually add one plus nine over four, which is 13 over four. So if we multiply the 13 over four, we're gonna get 260 over four. So we're gonna have 260 over four times nine to the power of four to the power of four over two. And then we can divide the 260 over four over two to get 260 over eight. So 260 over eight times nine to the power of over four to the power of four. And we can simplify this further into 65 times nine to the power over four to the power of four over two. Therefore, in this case, Q is 65 over two. And that's that question done. Okay, let's move on to the next. So the next question is find the least positive value of x or which the cosine equals one over root two. Okay, now for this, you need to remember some cosine values. And this is true in math A, you just need to remember some cosine values, the basics. For this, you can use my table. I have a table, which I just remember like this. So you write that down, sine, cosine. And then basically what you do is you write the fundamental angles, which are the ones you need to remember, zero, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Then you can proceed to write zero, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. And now you can get the cosine and sine of any of these angles by just doing the square root of this over two. When you remember this, it's way easier than remembering all of them individually. So um, say I want, I don't know, the sine of 30, then I can just go to my table, get this, do the root of one over two. And that is going to be the sine of 30. So using this table, you can figure out that it is 45 that we are looking for, right? Because the cosine of 45 is root two over two using my table, which is the same as one over root two, right? Basically, that's what you get if you multiply both the numerator and denominator by the root of two. So knowing that, now we know 45, which is also pi over four, equals x over two plus pi over three. So what we have to do now is we, try, we have to try and solve this equation. So if we do this, we're gonna get x over two equals pi over four minus pi over three. Pi over four minus pi over three, we can basically do common denominator of 12. So it'll be three pi, minus four pi, which is minus pi over 12. So we have that x over two is equal to minus pi over 12. So basically x equals minus pi over six. However, that is not a positive value of x, right? That's where this question gets tricky. So what we now need to do is find the next value of the cosine that is also one over root two and see if that works. So if we draw the unit circle, okay, if we have our angle being 45 degrees and that cosine is root uh, one over root two, this is one over root two. The next angle that's gonna meet the same requirement is this one. So basically this has the same horizontal width, which is the cosine. That angle is 360 minus pi over four. So basically seven pi over four. So we can now do the same thing. So x over two plus pi over three equals seven pi over four. We now do the same shebang. So x over two equals seven pi over four minus pi over three. We do the common denominator 12. So 21 pi minus four pi, and this is 17 pi over 12. So x over two equals 17 pi over 12. So x equals 34 pi over 12, or we can simplify this further to 17 pi over six. This is a positive value of x, and therefore this is the least uh, positive value of x for which this is true, right? We could find further positive values of x, uh, but they would be bigger. This is the smallest one for which this is true, right? The previous one was negative. So I hope that makes sense. Any questions, feel so free to leave them in the comments. I will make videos dedicated to what you don't understand. So don't worry about that. Okay, the next question is consider the function f of x equals x, well, root of x squared ln x plus four minus x squared, blah, blah, blah. So first, a should the distance between the origin and any point on the graph is given by l equals root, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the, the distance between two points on a graph, again, it's in the data booklet, right? But it's basically x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared in a square root. Okay, so distance as always x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so in this case, because we have a function, y is given by the function, if that makes sense. So l, the distance in this case, right, is going to be the root of, first of all, x2 minus x1, um, the origin is zero, so it's just x minus zero squared, right, because they're asking between the origin and any point on the graph, so it's whatever the x is minus zero. And then plus y2 minus y1. Again, y1, the origin is zero, so it is our y, which is our function. The function gives the y coordinates, right? That's a negative, sorry. Minus x squared, minus zero, and this is squared. So then if we do this, we're going to get x squared, right? And then the square root here is going to disappear over here. So we're going to get plus x squared ln x plus four. Sorry, I forgot the root over all of this. And then the x squareds cancel out, meaning the length, the distance is 
x squared ln x plus 4, as we're being asked to show. Okay, and then in part b, hence find the x coordinate on the point on the graph of f which is closest to the origin. Okay, so now we have a function that gives us the distance to the origin. So in order to find the minimum, whenever we're being asked for a minimum, we're going to do the derivative, right? So we need to find the derivative L prime, basically, right? What's L prime? Okay, well, first of all, we're going to have to apply the chain rule. So remember for a square root, so if you have root of x, the derivative is 1 over 2 root x. So we're going to apply the exact same logic here, 1 over 2 root, in this case, x squared ln x plus 4. But then, because we are applying the chain rule, right? Because this square root doesn't just contain the x, it contains something way more complex. We now have to multiply this times the derivative of what is inside. And what's the derivative of this? Well, we have to apply, apply product rule, right? So if u equals x squared, then u prime will equal 2x. If v equals ln x, then v prime will equal 1 over x. So then we multiply times its, so it's basically u times v prime, so x squared times 1 over x plus 2x ln x. And so it'll be x plus 2x ln x, and this is what we're multiplying times here. So x plus 2x ln x. Okay. And then this is the derivative, and we want to make this equal to zero, right? To find where it's at its minimum. Whoopsies. Okay, so 1 over 2 square root x squared ln x plus 4 times x plus 2x ln x equals zero. Okay. When does this equal zero? Well, as long as this equals zero, the whole thing will equal, equal zero. So we can just simplify to x plus 2x ln x equals zero. To simplify this, we can take the x to the other side. So 2x ln x equals minus x. So ln x equals minus x over 2x, meaning minus 1 over 2. Since ln x equals minus 1 over 2, that basically means it's e to the power of minus 1 over 2. So that is the x coordinate of the point that's closest to the origin. Okay, next question on binomial expansions. We have part of the expansion and we don't know what k or n is. We need to find n and k. So what I recommend here is start with the first term, 1. Is 1 going to tell you much? Absolutely not. Because when you expand the binomial, 1 is just 1, right? So it's just it's not going to tell you anything. Um, but let's start with the second one. So 9x over 2. So for this one, we know that it's n on r, 1 to the power of n minus r, times kx to the power of r. This is just the formula for the binomial expansion, right? So if we know that x is to the power of 1 and 9x over 2, we know that r has to be 1, right? So using that logic, we can then do n on 1 times 1 to the power of whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, so we can just cross this out times k times x because k to the power of 1, x to the power of 1. Okay, now let's go for that n on 1. So this is n factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial, which is just 1, times kx. So here's the trick to solving this. n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on, right? You can go up to infinity. And then n minus 1 factorial is n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, and so on and so on. So you can actually cross most of this out, leaving you with just n kx equals 9x over 2. We can now cross out the x's, and we know that n k equals 9 over 2. But just with this, we can't figure out either n or k. So let's use the second term we're given, which is 15k squared x squared. Same logic here. So for 15k squared x squared, you guessed it, r is 2 in this case, right? So n on 2, 1 again, we don't care about that. So we can just cross that out. And then k squared x squared. We apply the exact same logic. n on 2 is n factorial. So n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on and so on. And at the bottom, we have 2 factorial, which is just 2. And then n minus 2 factorial, which is n minus 2 n minus 3, and so on and so on. So again, we can cross out from n minus 2 onwards, and that leaves us with n times n minus 1 over 2 times k squared x squared. So we know this is equal to 15 k squared x squared. We can cross out the k squared x squared, and we're left with this. So if we cross multiply, we have n squared minus n over 2 equals 15. We can then multiply both sides times 2 to get n squared minus n equals 30. And we can now solve this like a quadratic equation and we will get, we can factorize as well. And we will get n minus 6 times n plus 5, meaning that the possible answers are n equals 6, n equals minus 5. Now, n equals minus 5 is not a possible answer because for a binomial expansion, n needs to be positive. So it is n equals 6. 
And now we can go back here, for example, to find k. So we know that 6k equals 9 over 2. So what we can first start by multiplying both sides times 2. So 12k equals 9, and therefore k equals 9 over 12. That's how you solve this question. It's actually not that difficult. You can simplify this to 3 over 4 if you want, but that's it. That's k, and that's n. Moving on to the next question. For a particular arithmetic sequence, u10 equals 14 and s25 equals 200. Find the value of k such that uk equals 0. So basically, it's asking us what term in the sequence equals 0. So let's start looking at some formulas. Um, we can first use the formula for the general term. We know that 14 is going to equal u1, which we don't know, plus n minus 1, which in this case is 9, right, times the difference. Again, we don't know the difference. And then for s25, we know that 200 is going to equal, and remember in this case, it's n over 2. Uh, we know n in this case is 25. 25 over 2 times u1 plus u25. We don't know u1. We also don't know u25. So what do we do here? It would be very, very simple if we could change u25 to something else, and we can, because u25 is just u1 plus 24 times the difference. So if we do that, we get 200 equals 25 over 2, u1 plus u1 plus 24d. That's u25. So now we have a simultaneous equation with this and the 14. But before we try and solve the simultaneous equations, I really recommend simplifying the bottom one because it's going to make life so much easier. So let's try and do that. We can get 200 equals, we can multiply the 25 over 2 times everything. So we're going to get 25 over 2 times u1 plus 25 over 2 times u1 plus 25 times 24d over 2. Okay, so now we can actually add the two u1s together. So we're just going to get 25 u1. Um, so we get 200 equals 25 u1 plus, and then here what we can do is we can simplify. We can divide the 24 over 2. We're going to get 12, and it's 25 times 12 d. If we simplify this further, it's 200 equals 25 u1 plus, and that's going to be 300 we can simplify this further by dividing by 4, and we'll get 40 equals 5u1 plus 60d. And actually, even further, by dividing again by 5, and we'll get 8 equals u1 plus 12d. We can now do the simultaneous equations. So we're going to have 14 equals u1 plus 9d, and then 8 equals u1 plus 12d. We can then subtract one from the other, and we get... 6 equals 0 minus 3d. So from here you get that d equals minus 2. And then you can substitute the minus 2 again into any of these. So for example, you can do 14 equals u1 plus 9 times minus 2. And you'll get 14 equals u1 minus 18. You then take the minus 18 to the other side, so it becomes positive. And 18 plus 14 is 32. So u1 equals 32. But we're not done because that's not what they're asking. What they're asking is find the value of k such that uk equals 0. But we can now use general terms. So we know that 0 is going to equal u1, 32, plus n minus 1. We don't know what n is. That's what we're trying to find, times the difference, which is minus 2. We can now multiply minus 2 times all of that. So 0 equals 32 minus 2 plus 2 minus 2n, sorry, plus 2. And then we can do the plus 2 plus the 32. So we get 0 equals 34 minus 2n. We can then do minus 34 equals minus 2n. And we then get n equals 17. So that is the final solution. uk u17 equals 0. Okay. Any questions? More than happy to reply in the comments. Also, do let me know in the comments if you find this type of video useful and you want another one. See you in the next one.